Hello friends! Welcome to another vlog. If you are new here, please do get down to the comment section below and introduce yourself because I love meeting you guys and there are always, always, always new people here which is just a source of like, where are you all coming from for me? <laughs> um, so today I'm in my sewing room. Uh, I've been cleaning it up mostly, except apparently this cape right here which I need to put away. Um, and I have been building this stool that I'm sitting on. I'm super excited. My husband bought me this stool which I am super excited about because I haven't had a stool in here before and now I can sit at my work table and work. <laughs> I don't always have to stand, which is fantastic. Let's see what's happened since I last talked to you. I went to Disneyland for my birthday. That was super fun. I turned 42. That is also super fun. I am still waiting for the answer to the question of life, the universe, and everything to um, come to me. Um, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> As you guys can probably see from my personal Instagram, which is linked down below, um, 42 is actually like my number. I've always had it in my email addresses and my account names and stuff. This is actually the first, eh, no, because I had another YouTube channel before this, but <laughs> it's my second time like not having my account name be LBC42. So, um, 42 is a special number for me, so I was really excited when I turned 42, actually. What else is happening? Um, let's see. I got some items here. So I got some scissors. I actually saved these out because I wanted to talk to you guys about them. These are from Guggenheim. How do you spell this? Let's see if we can get this to show up for you. It's spelled like that. And it was kind of a recommendation from Jenny, who runs SNS patterns, um, Sense and Sensibility Patterns. So I got these. They were super inexpensive and I was pumped to try out new scissors that weren't going to be as expensive as the scissors I normally like are. However, <laughs> this is a lesson on you get what you pay for. So I bought these two. Um, they weren't very expensive and they also do have like a return policy. Like if you don't like these, they'll buy you a pair of another brand that is well known to scissors. So I was like, screw it. I'll try it. I think these were like maybe $25 or something and these were like eight or nine so this is not an expensive experiment but this didn't work out the way I thought it would um these scissors are, are like sticky almost like they're hard to open and they sound like that like right out of the box um they also come in these plain white boxes that were heavily wrapped in plastic wrap with stickers all over them that said made in china so I'm not saying like lots of stuff isn't made in China, but like you don't need to put that all over the outside of the package. <laughs> it does make it seem kind of cheap. Um, I haven't actually tried these scissors out for cutting yet, which I will do soon, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Um, let me see if I can force it to zoom in. You see all this oil right there? Like all over here? Yeah, this is a bad sign, kids. Um... Because had I not noticed that, and I had I just cut into something with these scissors, that oil would get all in it. it when I first got it, it was actually all the way down here. Um, that oil, that makes them not make that horrible noise, um, <laughs> would have gotten all over my fabric. And that's a giant no-no. I do think that you should oil your scissors, but I think they should also, uh, the oil should be kept to the the hinge part um, if they're if necessary and they should be clean and dry especially when they are new out of the box so I'm not a huge fan of the situation so far I'm gonna eat, clean these up oil these properly and use them and I'll let you know how they they go as this vlog goes on um, I got this awesome button necklace um, from the lady to tell on Etsy I will link her channel below not channel <laughs> Etsy shop. Um, she has a bunch of Victorian button jewelry and I thought this was really pretty so she didn't have very many of them so I got them. Um, these are my husband's shorts. <laughs> he has a pocket issue so I'm just gonna um, for now sew across the top of here and chop this part off and like um, basically finish the seam for him so that he still has a pocket 
this whole pocket is about to fall apart like the fabric in here is just prone to do this and as you can see it like this hole goes like all the way through it's not just on one side and it's because he puts his keys on this pocket and these shorts are a couple years old but in the vein of we should try to mend and not just buy new shorts which is my first instinct which is hey these are twenty dollars <coughs> fast fashion um just buy another pair i was like all right um i can probably sew this shut for right now you can wear these keep wearing these with the pockets as is until it bothers you enough or another hole develops and then i will um try and replace the pocket um the problem is the pocket is sewn in here like into the main seam in such ways that it would be a nightmare to have to like replace these out and I'm not saying I can't do this, I'm just saying I don't really want to spend my sewing time fixing his shorts. Um, <laughs> but I might do it anyway. So we're going to give it a go and do that. So friends, I am in somewhat of a sewing rut. And I have been thinking about that for the last few weeks. I have spent much time in my bed just chilling, uh, watching The Great British Bake Off, which they can't call that in the United States because Pillsbury... Pillsbury? has the rights to the word Bake Off, apparently. <laughs> like, they they trademarked Bake Off, <laughs> which I'm like, really? Really? So anyway, um, they can't use that, so that's why it's called The Great British Baking Show on Netflix. Um, so I've been binging that. Um, thinking about why I don't, I'm not sewing. <laughs> I'm like, I just need to pick up my camera and start. <sighs> so I think I needed some time after my job was over to just like decompress, so I took it. And then, um, I also realized, like, everyone keeps expecting me to start this ball gown. And I don't really have a picture of it in my head, so I can't really start this ball gown. And I feel kind of stuck by that. So uh, I've decided I'm just going to unstick myself from that and just not work on the ball gown until I'm, like, good and ready to do that. So um, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to work on other stuff, and even if that stuff doesn't seem like it makes sense in the, the chronology of my life, um, until I figure out exactly what it is I want to make. I do have patterns coming from Vic Truly Victorian. They are, I bought, I bought like almost all the patterns I just didn't have already from <laughs> this time period. So I bought any ball gown bodice from the 1880s through the 1890s. And then I also bought like a bunch of their Edwardian patterns because I want to try a couple of those Edwardian walking skirts. Um, there's one that I have been using and is actually the what the skirt that I use for like all of my costumes is actually um, an Edwardian walking skirt and I love that pattern so I'm gonna try like the 10 gore one and see how that goes um, anyway I have some patterns coming so I can start on like under layers if I want to that sort of thing um, but I don't know if I'm gonna make a new corset or not um, my gut instinct is to not pressure myself with that at the moment um, yeah, so I realized uh, a couple of the reasons I don't think I have an image coming to my mind right now is because uh, I just really don't like that silhouette. So I've moved back to 1889 and I've started looking at those with the help of Morgan and um, I feel a lot better about, about those designs. So I'm probably going to go something like 1889 um, and there's some, some beautiful uh, pictures that I'm kind of looking at. I'll put a couple of them up here so you can see like vaguely what I'm thinking about. Um, my gown is probably going to be black um, because I'm doing Crowley from Good Omens, so <laughs> it needs to be black. Uh, probably black and gray and I might throw a little burgundy in there because that is my favorite color um, and uh, an all black gown seems like it might just vanish and I'm gonna try to think of ways to zazz up the gown. There is also an element of fear a little bit, and I am being vulnerable with you people to let you know. <laughs> um, I don't drape. I'm a pattern kind of girl, and I've like always said that. I'm just a pattern person. Um, and I think this bodice is going to require me to do a certain level of draping, and i got to admit that I am moderately nervous about that. So it is what it is. I know I can do it. Like mentally, I'm like, oh, of course I can do that. Like other people do that. Why wouldn't I be able to do that? But that doesn't stop me from like sort of getting a subconscious mental block because I am actually subconsciously nervous about it. I did drape the bodice, um, well, the thing that goes sort of, it's attached to, but it goes over the corset, the foundation layer for my, um, butterfly dress but I had help on that so but I did I have done it before so it's not like it's even the newest thing ever to me 
um, and it was super successful then, so I don't, I don't know why I'm like this, but I'm like this right now, so I'm just gonna let it be, let it wash over me and move past it. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine. I just need a little bit more time to sit around and think about it and let an idea pop into my head. Um, I do know that I wanna incorporate a snake in there, possibly through embroidery, and I do know that I wanna incorporate possibly an apple in there somehow, so we'll see how that comes together. So, meanwhile, I'm gonna pick some other stuff to work on. Um, I do want to go ahead and finish that bodice, uh, which I need to do the ribbon trim on, and then that'll be done. Uh, the 1870s polonaise that I have been working on the skirt for for so long, uh, <laughs> so that I can mark that off my list and call it done. That would be fantastic. And then I might move on to one of the other things on my long laundry list of items. So, for those of you who are new here, I'm gonna go look at that. Yay, I love that my heater's running. That's gonna make all of this so easy to edit. Woo woo! Alright, so, for those of you who are new, I split my board into old business, medium business, and new business. The old business is, of course, UFOs, things that are not done. This is the item in question that I really want to get done. This over here, covered in trash cans, is the skirt that goes with that. So I'm done with that guy and I would really like to just mark this whole thing off. Um, I do have these other two things I should work on at some point, um, and we'll see how that goes. Medium business is this evening gown we've been talking about. Um, historical Hogwarts. I have to think about that. <laughs> that made me go, oh yeah, that. Um, yeah, we're going to think about that. And then I do have this nightgown project. Um, I have no idea if that's going to happen or not, but we'll see. <laughs> it's still not a thing. Neither one of these are a thing that I actually want to work on right now, which is weird. What I do want to work on is all this new business. I am absolutely like that guy <laughs> in that picture where he's holding his girlfriend's hand and looking back at another, another girl. Because here are my other girls. New business. And this is the list of new business. So, fun times. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to pick something off of here, possibly, and work on it, or start thinking about some of these. I'm not sure. The first thing I'm going to do is go look in my trim books for trim that I can use the ribbon that I have for the jacket to try and get this sucker done. I could literally just put a line or two of this ribbon around the collar and the cuffs and call it good and that would look great, but I'm kind of hoping that I can come up with something more. And if I can't, that's okay too, and I'll just do it to get it done, and I can replace it later if I need to, but I would like to make it nice. So this is the amount of gunk that was on those scissors. I just wiped them down once, like I just slid it over them. Uh, gunk and oil and stuff that was on there. There was oil running all the way down the outside of the blade. So, yeah, not a fan. They should not come from a factory like this. They should be better than this. <laughs> so, it's actually been many days. Um, and they've been emotional days. I have had um, a bunch of stuff to do and also been not feeling so well, so I just took a little break because I have time. Um, <laughs> so I did. Um, <clears throat> the emotional roller coaster has come uh, several times, partially about this trim that I've been working on, which has been making me nuts. So I was looking at this book, Ribbon Trims by Nancy Nearing. It's a good book. I highly recommend it. And I came upon a like zigzag trim, which I made. Let me show it to you. Okay, so this is vaguely what it looks like. It's just um, woven inside of itself to make a little zigzag. And I was like, that's cool. And then I looked at it and I thought about it and I'm like, actually, I hate that. <laughs> so I did this thing that I should have done like months and years and whatever ago, which was look up 1970 or 1870 polonaise and see what kind of trims I could find online that other people have done slash were historically accurate. <laughs> you know what's historically accurate? Just a freaking ribbon, like placed on there. <sighs> so... Um, I am gonna do that. I'm still trying to figure out if I want to do one right on the edge and then maybe a second one slightly in. Like that sounds kind of cool, but I don't know how I deal with the button situation. 
because I can get it right on the edge, but then I think the secondary one would like come down next to the buttons and also on the other side um, because I've seen people go down this line with it and then maybe back up. So I don't know. I'm going to play with that a little bit. Um, I am going to go to a sit and stitch with a friend right now and check this situation out and like experiment a little bit with it. Um, mostly I just want this ever done. <laughs> like I want to never look at this again and I'm going to just go the simple ribbon method despite this. I think this is a cute trim. But what happened was I looked at the bottom of the page and it says this is a um, historically accurate um, alternative to Rick Rack. And I'm like, oh, that actually just ruined it for me. And I don't know why I hate the word Rick Rack, but I kind of do. It just seems frumpy. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> also, this trim is kind of a disaster to make. Like, it's just kind of a nightmare. Hi, you could stop rocking back and forth. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go over there sit and think about what's happening here, maybe mock up a couple of these, and then start applying trim, because I want this done, and I want it done now. I want it done by the end of this video, <laughs> is where we're at. The backpack does have trim on it, um, and I kind of, like, this is too much, but I like this trim a lot. Um, although it is not the most matchy-matchy, it is that blue that I kept saying wasn't good enough, but here it is, and I put it on there before. So go me. Anyway, I like it on the butt area though. Um, can you even see it? Not really. A little bit. It dazzles in the sunlight. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get this done because I'm, I'm done thinking about this project and I want to move on to something else. Okay, I'm back and um, I feel like a lot better actually. So that was a, a good visit in a lot of ways because I feel like I got unstuck. And I've been feeling stuck for a very long time, so yay. Um, so what we decided is I was going to do, I went around the very edge around here, and I'm only to like here. Like that was two hours of work because I was watching Critical Role, which I have never seen before, which was awesome. <laughs> um, so I'm going to finish this up real quick, and then I'm going to do a second layer where it's going to go like next to it and around and then down and then it will come down basically on either side of the buttons and go to the bottom and then over. Um, I don't think I'm going to try to slide one like in between here. I probably could, but that seems crazy. So I'm just going to do the second layer, layer, turn it and go down and around. Um, which funnily enough was what I was actually going to do in <laughs> like originally. That was my first thought was just two lines of trim, like just ribbon. And I second guessed the crap out of myself, which was dumb. Why am I like this? So, um, don't second guess yourself, kids, is I guess my lesson in life. Um, so, yeah, I am feeling good about this and I want to get this done specifically by the end of this vlog. I'm actually going to go out of town this weekend. I'm going to go to the Fabric District. I guess you don't need to look at that. You can look at me. I'm going to go to the Fabric District with um, a couple people that I know from Costume College and a new friend of mine that I met on Instagram, so um, I will try and take you guys with me, although I probably won't like make it its own vlog, I'll just include it as part of my vlog. Um, we are doing pool party bathing suits, I guess, um, for Costume College, so we are going to go get the fabric for that. Um, so I want to get this done before I leave. It's basically what's the what. So I'm going to go into my um, bedroom and listen to more Harry Potter. I'm on book seven. I got there, guys. I got there. <laughs> um, actually, like, I keep thinking about listening to another book in between them. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. I can't do that. And then I'm like, do I need to listen to book seven? Like, I could just stop. And then I'm like, no, I'm a completionist. So I'm going to finish it <laughs> again. Um, and I'm like three chapters in, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but before I do all that, I have, I do have some stuff to show you. What is what I want to show you? Um, this is a giant box of patterns from Truly Victorian, so I can maybe make a ball gown bodice. Um, but I also got a bunch of Edwardian walking skirt patterns and stuff like that. Um, I have one Edwardian walking skirt pattern that I really like. Maybe it's actually just late Victorian. I don't know. I should go look at it. Um, and it's actually what this skirt and what Iron Man skirt and what what um 
Watson skirt are all made out of. So I decided I should try a different one and maybe I'll use some, some of that wool fabric up to make a skirt. But also, you guys can probably see this. Um, I'm like super emo when I look at this. So I've just left it here for a couple days. I had a really bad day one day. I was feeling sorry for myself about sewing. I was feeling sorry for myself a bunch of, about a bunch of stupid stuff. And I went out um, to a house concert with my friend. And when I got home, this was waiting here for me from Christine, who is so steen on Instagram, her blog, and YouTube. <laughs> I will link all those things down below for you. Um, and she sent me this. This is the thing that she made in her very first YouTube video. Um, she does embroidery and she digitizes her own embroidery and it's mind blowing guys like oh it's so amazing um to watch her do that kind of stuff so she's gonna she's making videos about digitizing embroidery but also just like the kind of stuff you can embroidery and the costume she's working on and whatever so she made this in her first one and then she sent it to me and <laughs> she says it's because I, she's on YouTube because of me, but she's not, she's on YouTube because of her, because she's amazing. And she did all the work. I just said, yeah, you can do it like a bunch of times. <laughs> so she sent me this beautiful reticule, um, which she made in the video, which I am just like, ah, about, um, <laughs> so I love this. Um, she sent me some beeswax in here. Um, she has these beautiful cards. Like, look at this and look at the, like, foil filigree. Yeah. So, these cards are gonna go up on my, um, this is just gonna get called my Luna Lovegood board at this point because I just put all my friends' stuff up here now. Like, these are all Bernadette's pictures and this is, um, what Melissa made me at Christmas time and Morgan drew me here and she gave me this pin. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. I also have a card that's like this from Nikki um, Leem, so I'm gonna put that up here too. That that one's actually weirdly in my bedroom mirror, like just like wedged in there. So like, this is probably a better place for Nikki to not have to be where the magic happens, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, she sent me that. And then check out this badge holder. Isn't this awesome? <laughs> so I'm gonna wear this at Costume College for sure um, whenever I need a badge. Um, because how awesome. I wish I had like a pin on the back of it because sometimes I don't have anything. I, mean, I could just clip to my collar though. Oh, so cool. Um, I also got a new sleeve board. I had one of those ones that like collapses and goes flat, but it was just wood. And it was like from my, like my grandma let me use it as an ironing board with my dolls when I was a baby basically. Um, anyway, it like at some point rusted into the closed position. <laughs> And I was like, oh, it's time to get a new one of these, um, <laughs> because I'm going to need that. And also this one has padding in it, which I really like. So I ordered a new sleeve board, which just came, and um, I've used it a couple times already, and it's a really, it's like so much better than the like 1970s one I had before, so. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go put this trim on. It's super boring. You guys don't need to see me do that, so I'm going to go deal with that, and I will be right back with you. Okay. We have ringed this area with like a somewhat decent turn and ringed the bottom of here. And now I'm going to pin on a second layer, second one that would go around it again, and then maybe come down here and go all the way down and then around. But I don't know. I kind of like don't hate it the way it is right now but I'm gonna just pin it on and see how it looks and I'll let you know okay so it's just sort of like vaguely pinned in there there's like a big old like that's too wide right there but whatever um so this is essentially what I'm thinking I might scoot this one out a little bit just down a little bit um because this is like an inch from the edge so maybe if that was an inch from the edge so this just go down a little bit um, yeah, so I like it. I think I'm going to run with it. And then I'll put another one on the sleeves also, an inch from the edge. So that's all cool. And then we'll see how that looks before we decide if this is like finito. Okay, so I have it about a third of the way done. I have this whole thing on and then 
up the side there to the back. Um, I need to go around the neck and then do the same thing on the other side. So that's why I think it's about a third done. I've also reset the width on the neck down to like here and um, I remeasure it and repin it for when I do it because I don't think what I pinned was exactly right. Um, anyway, I'm pretty happy with how far I got, but my thumb hurts at this point because I've been hand sewing for like, I want to say like six or seven hours at this point. Um, between doing this and this and this. And when I tell you that it's been that long, it really has been that long. And this is why I don't like hand sewing kids because it takes me for freaking ever. Um, but this is why I'm hand sewing so I get faster at it. Um, the thing that's actually taking so long really is that it's not just one row of stitches. Like I have to stitch this on twice for every part. Okay, let me just explain it. So I go along this edge and then I go along this edge. So like, I'm not just sewing this on once, like this gets sewn on essentially twice. Um, and I sew down like every one of these corners and stuff like that. So <sighs> that's why it takes so long. <laughs> but also I am just slow AF. Like that is just my law in life to be the slowest hand sewer that's ever existed. So cool. <laughs> I'm going to keep hand sewing, even though I hate it, <laughs> because I want to get faster. I wonder if my camera thinks it's focusing, like, oh, right here. That's awesome on me. Boop. Hey, new camera, what's up? Face. Um, yeah, okay, so tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to try and do as much of this as possible to finish it, because I... Like I said, want it done. I'm also going to put one more ring around the um, cuffs of the arms so that there are two there. And then call it good, I think. I might add a ruffle later, but maybe not. Um, tomorrow night I have a concert. I, I Do you guys know the band Tool? I'm going to go see Tool. I love Tool. Um, so we're going to go check them out tomorrow. I've seen them in concert a few times and they are always amazing. So that is what I have to report for now. This vlog is going to get something accomplished, damn it. <laughs> I'm like really tired of not getting things done, so. And then I'm going to start on something new, I think. I don't know what that something is, but I'm going to start something new because I'm not ready on the ball gown. I'm just not ready. <laughs> so um, I'm going to keep doing research on that. Um, and I mean, I have enough of my own books that I should be looking through so I'm gonna do more of that um, while I start something new but um, I think I might make me myself an either an 18th century jacket or I want to make a couple pairs of mitts so I might make a pair of mitts or that wearable mock-up I have that that's hanging like literally right behind my head right there um, <laughs> the red and white 18th century um, I should make the actual at some point and like figure out what that would be. Um, I do kind of actually want to adjust that so I may work on the adjustment to the pattern of that. The, the hole that your neck is was really wide like you can see the strap to my stays a lot and I would like to just bring that in just a little bit I think. Um, and the sleeves are pretty good. I'm wondering if they could be better. I'm not sure, so I might work on adjusting that pattern. I don't know which of those things I'm going to do, and it might be something completely different. I have no idea. Um, oh, the when I go to the Fabric District this weekend, um, the reason I'm going is partially to get also black fabric so for my ball gown. So part of the reason I am not starting on that is because I don't have the fabric for it. Um, I was going to try and like sew almost exclusively from Stash this year, if I could possibly do that, but um, I don't have black, like, Crowley style, Crowley? Crowley? Whichever way you say it. Anyway, I just don't have black taffeta, so I can't make that dress. Even if I had all the stuff and I was set, I couldn't make it, so. Um, but it's not in my head yet, and I need to like get rolling on something. I need to get, I need to get the, the, my body moving, if you know what I mean. So we're going to work on that. Okay. I will see you guys tomorrow with more adventures on this trim. I like this trim. I think it's looking good. I'm, I'm feeling solid, solid about it. I, 
it was honestly the first thing I was thinking I was gonna I'm sorry I'm looking at it <laughs> it was the first thing I thought I would do um when I bought the trim and then I second guessed myself for like literally a month about this trim and why what for just do the thing like honestly the thing that like tipped me over the edge was like oh well if I decide I hate this later I can just take this trim off and put other trim on so like <laughs> it's not the end of the world I mean it's a lot of hours of work or whatever gone but um then at least it's like done and I can hang it up in my closet and not think about it anymore <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I don't know why I second-guessed myself for, for that long. I was just, like, in the middle of a mental roadblock. But we have moved past it now. We are out of that mental roadblock. We're still kind of in the mental roadblock vis-a-vis, -vis, um, the ball gown. But I'm going to try to get through that by getting, getting going on something. I think my creative juices will start flowing again once I start cranking things out. So we will see. Okay, it's Tuesday. I'm awake. <laughs> I fed the cats, and now I am going to go ahead and try and do as much of this as possible before I have to go to my concert tonight. Um, my hands hurt a little bit from yesterday. Um, Self-care, kids. Um, <laughs> but I am so pumped at not being stuck on this anymore that I want to just get it done. So, I'm gonna sew now <laughs> that's what's gonna happen and I will soak my hands later so um, my hands are massive for anyone who doesn't know um, I wear a size 11 ring um, and they hurt all the time so hand sewing is probably extra fun for me because a I have giant hands and B they get sore super easy so um, that is my tale of woe which I've now told you and I'm gonna go ahead and get cracking with this <laughs> it's like dark out now <laughs> I think I've been sewing for like, I want to say four hours. Anyway, this is all done. It's all on. This guy has now two rings. I just need to put one more ring on here and then we're all good. But I have to get ready to go to this concert. I would show you me, but man, I'm a mess right now. Um, anyway, so I feel really good about this. I feel like it looks really good. Um, I'll show you again once it's actually all done and I iron it a little bit and then put it on my dress form so I can photograph it. But I'm feeling solid about this outfit at this point. So yeah, getting very close. I should be done either later tonight if I feel like doing it after I get back from the concert. It's only like, I think that will take me like an hour maybe, maybe less. Um, or I'll do it tomorrow. But it will get done! I'm so excited. I've been stuck for so long. Okay, well there she is. She's all done. That's what the final looks like. Um, I will put a picture of what it looked like when I was wearing it before here for you guys so you can see like the difference that make the trim makes. I like it a lot. I think it adds a lot. I'm super into the pleating on the skirt. I think that helps a bunch and I think this trim that I put onto the jacket makes it feel significantly more finished so I am extremely pleased with this project and I am even more pleased to be able to go over here and finally do the thing that we've all been waiting for for so long boop boop all done I'm just gonna erase that in a minute actually <laughs> I was photographing her and I put a bustle underneath the back so you could see what the full silhouette looks like. This is the back end of this guy. She needs a little floofy floof, but um, it's hard to see on camera, but there's definitely like tassels down here. <clears throat> of course she fits weird because she's on a mannequin, but... This guy fits me pretty well, although, I don't know, I don't love the sleeves on it, but, um, I definitely will wear it. I think the sleeves are definitely drop sleeves, um, as you're coming out of the 1860, they start, like, literally creeping up as you get, and then when you get to, like, 1890s, they're actually, like, the sleeve head is way up here, like, it's crazy, so, um, it is period, and it is 
the way the sleeve head is supposed to be. I just kind of hate these sleeve heads. Anyway, I'm super glad she's done. I like, I want to hang this up and call it good. <laughs> Sorry if I'm like wet and shiny. I just got out of the shower. Um, but I wanted to talk about what you guys just saw in this video because I think it's kind of important. And also, it's like sort of my advice for what to do with you when you're stuck. Um, a lot of people ask me a lot of times, what do I do when I get stuck? I don't know where to start. I don't know how to trim stuff. I don't know what I need to do to make all this happen. It seems so daunting. And so the first message I would like to give you is that we all get stuck. We all feel this way. I mean, look at Kathy and her peacock dress. She got stuck on that like three or four times and for a very long period of time. Hi Keanu! Keanu wants to be on camera. He always wants to be on camera. He's not gonna be on camera right now. Later. Um, yeah, so, she, I mean, she's gotten stuck on that several times. I got stuck on ribbon. Like, all it is is ribbon. Ribbon. <laughs> so, and I got stuck for like a month. So, I have a few tried and true tactics, and I used them this week, and you guys saw me use them. And I think it's a good, um, like, not lesson, but like, piece of advice I have for you, which is I go through a small, like, checklist of things to do that um, help me get through stuff like this. The first one is that I let myself feel it, and I wallow, and I just allow it. So I gave myself several weeks time of not knowing what to do with this, not researching it, not talking about it, not doing anything, letting it just, like, come to me if it's gonna happen. And I think that's an important step. And, like, <sighs> denying yourself the feelings that you're having is just going to cause them to be delayed. Like, they're, they're going to happen at some point anyway, so you might as well just accept that you feel that way. Even when I'm just, like, sad about stuff, I just let myself wallow. It's only going to last a couple hours for me, because I don't get, like, clinical depression, thank God, but, you know, for the people that do, like, you know, it's okay to let yourself feel your feelings. You don't want to let them go too far because then bad things happen, but I think it's okay to let yourself feel how you're feeling. So I felt bummed about this. Like, I was legitimately like, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, I hate this, I want to burn it. Which is a part of all of my costumes. Every single one of them I get stuck on. I've gotten stuck on Iron Man, I got, I've been stuck on everything. Every single one I've been jammed. The second piece of advice I would say is don't second guess yourself when you have an idea. This was actually my first idea, was just to put like two lines of ribbon on this thing and just call it good. Because I had seen it before and in fact, now that I look at it, there's a picture on my wall, which I'll show you in a minute, which basically is this dress-ish and has this trim-ish. I don't know why I didn't just do it. I was like, oh, I want to make something more complicated and more flashy and better and yeah, yeah. No, no, I didn't need that. I don't even love this outfit. It's just something I'm trying to save. Like, as you can tell from my attitude about it, I'm like 50% in on this thing. I'm not even 100% I love this, this dress and I'm gonna wear it all the time. It's just something that I didn't think that I wanted to throw out. So the third thing I did, so one was wallow, two was not second guess myself, which I did second guess myself. This is a lesson. The third thing I did was I talked to my friends and I um, told, just told them, hey, I'm in a rut about this. And largely I talked to them about um, the 1890s dress um, and they're really good at helping me with other solutions. And one of the things that they told me to do was just make something else. <laughs> so like just work on something else. So for that problem, I am going to work on something else. And for this problem, I just started thinking about working on something else and then the answer sort of came to me. The fourth thing is do some research. <laughs> like, honestly, me, of all people, I did not do my research. I went through this book and I found some trims that I thought were awesome and I tried them and I didn't like the way any of them looked and I couldn't figure out why. So then I said, you know what, I need to just go look up 1870s Polonaise and see what I come up with. I came up with other people who had made this particular pattern. I came up with actual Polonaise, like, drawings from you know, fashion plates and stuff. And I came up with a, um, a few other, like, people's portraits that they had painted and stuff like that. Frequently, this is the trim that was used. <laughs> so I'm like, duh, of course. So do your research. That's definitely going to help you unstick. And the last thing that happened was I thought to myself, 
what's the worst that's gonna happen if I apply this stupid trim or I make this dress this way or I make the ball gown I'm gonna have to make and it sucks what is the worst thing that's gonna happen well for this I'm just gonna take the trim off and put different trim on so applying this trim and trying it is not gonna like it's gonna take a bunch of my time I think it took like probably 15 hours of me hand sewing which sucks but if I had to rip all that off, I'd be like, well, at least I tried. And I don't have to rip it all off because turns out I like it. So <laughs> I worked with this guy once called Vlad. Um, he was like directly from Russia and he was a programmer and I would say, Vlad, if I push this button, is it going to work? Because it never worked. <laughs> and I would just get tired of being his QA person. I'm not a QA person, but I QA'd all of his stuff. And he would say, just try. <laughs> so now I use the Vlad method of just try. Like, just give it a go. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? On this ball gown, the worst that's going to happen is that it's going to suck and I'm going to go to a ball in which I try to hide in the back of pictures. Like, that'll be okay because I can make everybody else stand in front of me and I'll just stick my head out and be like, hey, and I'll have good hair or whatever and it'll be fine. That is not the worst thing that's going to happen in the whole world if I go to the ball with a horrible dress that I don't love. Or I'll make a dress that looks fine, but I don't love it and I don't ever wear it again. But I will have a great time and I'll learn something making this ball gown. So just try, just try. That's all you need to do is start. So the just try and the research are really the killers on this one. They made me go, oh, I shouldn't have second guessed myself. I could have had this done a month ago if I just had done what I thought I wanted to do to begin with instead of like <sighs> trying to be fancy. I don't know why I was trying to be fancy. In my head, I had this mission that I'm on which is to learn more and grow more and try stuff and the trying stuff specifically with making samples and twelves and like not just jumping straight into fashion fabric on everything um, was actually one of the things that actually got me stuck like I messed with my own head in some ways by saying like I oh I should go through this book and like make a bunch of different samples so I can see which one I actually like the best instead of just jumping to the conclusion that slapping some ribbon on there is the best option. It wasn't it, it was the best option actually I did do the thing where I tried making a bunch of samples I only showed you one or two of them but I actually made like five or six and they were all disasters, especially in this thin trim, because it's only this wide. Like, it's not wide enough to make big, floofy trim. So, I messed with my own head on this one. And it was all essentially, you know, it's always all in your head. Like, that's, that's really what it is. It's always all in your head. And then the second you realize that and just sort of go, oh, this is in my head. I should just try and let me look some stuff up and see what I can find. Copying something else is not bad. We all make recreation things. Again, Kathy with the, the peacock gown. She's making a recreation of the Worth dress. Of a Worth dress, not the Worth dress. A, well, for her, it's the Worth dress. It's a Worth dress. Copying things is awesome. <laughs> like, if you find something you like, just copy that. And mix and match it and, and do it in any way possible. She's copying it because she wants to know how it was made. And she's fascinated by it by a like by a mathematical standard um, where she wants to know like how did this work and how did it feel to wear it and what did it look like in reality because it's all tarnished now and stuff like that and that's her inspiration for doing that but you may just be like hey that thing is gorgeous and I want one totally valid do that anyway this wasn't supposed to be a huge dry tribe but I did want to talk to you guys about this because I feel like a lot of people ask me these questions and they seem to be like incapable of um, figuring out how to start and figuring out how to unstick themselves or they um, have, have a, a need to, to have perfection be the first thing and, and it's not going to be perfect the first time. Like this isn't perfect even now, like there's tons of flaws in this and I think it's a beautiful dress now and I'm way more apt to wear it than I was before so I've made it more beautiful by doing that. Could I add more stuff to it? Probably and maybe in another five years I will add more stuff to it. Um, but for now I'm really happy with it and you're never going to know how to do stuff until you try and until you cut yourself some slack. Both on feeling bad about not knowing what to do, cut yourself some slack, let yourself feel it. It's fine and then move through it. Like my body went, I don't know what to do, I want to lay around and then it laid around and then it was like alright get up, go do it, go figure it out. So I figured it out and that's the way to go. 
Okay, these are wise words from an old lady. <laughs> um, if you got to the end of this video, say to the end because I'm always curious about who gets all the way to the end of these. Um, I do want to know what you guys are listening to. By the way, I'm halfway through Harry Potter 7. Actually, I'm more than halfway. I'm like 65% through Harry Potter 7. And I like literally two days ago, I was like, uh, it's going to be a schlog. It's not that bad. <laughs> I have been listening to it for like seven or eight hours a day because I've been sitting there hand sewing and listening to Harry Potter. I wasn't even watching TV. Um, so that's what I'm listening to right now. I'm not sure what I'm going to listen to next because I have a whole bunch of... Um, books that all look exciting so I think I'm just gonna like Russian roulette my okay so in audible you can filter by your unread selections and I've like marked all the stuff that I have read as read so then I can just like Russian roulette up and down and then stop and play I'm gonna try that and see how that goes I'll let you know what it is that I got um so I'm gonna end this vlog the next vlog is gonna be super interesting because I am gonna start something new I kind of need a bonnet so I might make that bonnet I might make that 18th century jacket I might make some mitts I have a different bustle dress I would like to start I would love to learn how to cover parasols so anything is possible I might make that bonnet though that might be the thing um I'm also going to go down to Southern California and go to the fabric district on Saturday with some people and I'm going to go to Disneyland on Sunday um, with someone who some of you might know so I'll see if she wants to be on camera or not um, and then I will come back and get cracking on more stuff so I'm very excited that's what I'm up to what are you guys up to what are you making what are you working on thoughts questions concerns oh um so like I said I'm going to do a couple videos on uh, controversial topics like fast fashion and gatekeeping in this hobby and um, that sort of thing. If you guys have any questions or things you want me to cover about fast fashion or like synthetic fiber com conversations or gatekeeping conversations or any of that kind of stuff, then um, I would love to talk about it and I'm going to talk about it. So if you have any of that kind of stuff you want to talk about, leave your questions, comments, whatever down below so that I know what it is you guys are interested in and if you have anything specific you want me to talk about my feelings on they're all just gonna be my feelings so anyway if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up um, subscribe if you haven't and I will see you guys next time with another video that might be a bit of an adventure <laughs> okay bye guys